so ready. I'm so excited. Me too. You look so wonderful. Thank you. HB Cosmetics. Let's see? Just give a see? shout out. That's our girl, Heather B. Yep, that's what my um, <laughs> blush is right yeah, now. Yeah, see? Yes. <laughs> I love it. Okay, this is something I have been dreaming up for, gosh, what was it? November 2019. Oh my god. Well, but then 2020 happened. Oh, COVID. We know. <laughs> Nothing happened. We know. Um, but my thought was, my business is very picture-oriented, obviously. Mm-hmm. Like, there's all these photos. But nobody gets to know the women in the pictures, and they should. I agree. Like, every woman that comes through here has a story, and um, it's beautiful. And I'm like, look at this pretty photo of her. Which is beautiful, but there's so much I mean, more. Yeah, you don't know the like the... What's behind the photo? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And kind of building a community, which I know you're so great at, and going, yeah. hey, women, like we're in this together and we have stories to tell. Yep. And that's why you're here. Um, so happy to be here. So, you. first of all, let me introduce Mrs. Alexandria Reed. Um, <laughs> if I introduce her, this is what I'm going to say. I wrote you a little intro. Okay. And let's, let's hear it. Hopefully, it's not like, oh my God, and I'm going to get up and walk away. Oh God. <laughs> Don't leave me. Yet. Okay. Um, a strong boss babe who loves deeply. Um, you empower people and create community through your podcast and your conference. Um, I got to see your beauty through your blush and tease session, but I feel like all of that is like scratching Aww. the surface. You've got a business, you've got family. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more. Like yeah. introduce yourself. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> she speaks too highly of me. Oh, so. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I am a Denver-based realtor and podcaster and now conference creator. Woo! Woo! So excited um, for that this fall. And... I am a mom of two little CEOs in training, a 19-month-old and a 9-year-old. Um, the 19-month-old gives me a run for my money every single day, um, but she's so much fun. Um, I'm, a, I'm a husband. I have a husband. I am a wife to um, Brandon, and he puts up with so much and my crazy ambition. Um, he is just... He's amazing. And we've been married for oh God, 12 years. Yes, that's amazing. 12 years. So, yeah, I'm like, hold on. <laughs> Count it um, <laughs> 12 years. And, yeah, I just love connecting with people through stories and through, I believe that, you know, we don't exist for ourselves. I think that we exist ultimately to change somebody else's life. So I love that. That is me. That is you. Okay, yeah. so you have all these hats. Yeah. What What's your favorite part of your job? Like between real estate or your podcast or this conference you're building, what's it, your favorite part? It's connection, hands down. Yeah, hands down it's connection. And that's and I feel like it, it translates in every hat that I wear. Like I get to connect with people and I get to connect people with other people and I just love I just love connecting. Well and connecting people to their forever homes. Yes it's, like a, it's huge, a story. Yes. Oh, yes. I love yeah. it. I love that you look deeper than just like let's find a house. No, it's not you know like I, mean? I wanna know like okay, I'm gonna go on a tangent. Can I do, go on a tangent? Do it. Okay. Do it. Tangent. So for me like I love to know like okay like what do you enjoy doing? Do you like entertaining? Do you hate entertaining? Do you right. have family? Like where's your family? Are they gonna be coming to visit? Do you want them to not stay with you. Do you want them to stay with you? Oh. <laughs> no guest bedroom. <laughs> no guest bedroom. But I like to know my people yeah. and know their story of how, like, everything leading up to, like, me meeting them. So then I can help them write that next chapter with this next home and not, like, oh, three bedrooms, two baths, cool, here you go. Right. But, like, oh, you know, I don't know if you'll like this home because that guest bedroom is going to be right next to the primary bedroom. Yeah. Um, Side note, we don't say master bedroom anymore, guys. It's a oh, no-no. Just so, yeah, we don't say that I anymore. just learned something. Yeah. But yeah, so I like to know the stories yeah. behind them so then I can help write the next chapter. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's freaking amazing. And so much of so much of who you are is storytelling. Yeah. There's that connection piece, but storytelling is huge. Which when I created like this part of the video series that I want to do, I was calling it Tell Her Story. And I was like, who better to have then you <laughs> come and join us um, because that is just so important. And you already talked about connection. Tell me how storytelling plays into what you do. I believe literally the storytelling and connection go hand in hand. And I always use this example, but I believe that's how we connect as humanity is through storytelling. So for me, storytelling could be something, excuse me, super simple as to like how your grandfather liked his coffee super strong and like that story can connect with someone and then now they feel like um, they're connected to you and then they, that leaves a door to open for more connection. So yeah. um, 
for me and like what I do, I feel like that that's where the importance lies is hearing someone's story so then you can connect. So like if for instance, like I know like I hope it's okay to say this, but I'm gonna Go say it, it anyway. <laughs> um but like I know that you are a believer. Yeah. And that's another way that I connected with you. Yeah. And so now like I get to have Adina forever. Yeah. So and it, that's where we start like that's where like the connection came into play. Yeah. But then all these other stories kind of compiled on top of that. So I believe that storytelling plays a role in literally everything I do. Every business venture that I have, every podcast episode, obviously telling stories. Like just it's just about storytelling with the intention to connect. But yeah. I believe that's how you connect is through storytelling. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've sat with a client and they I mean they're nervous when they come to me and they feel like this yeah. is something brand new for them. And if I catch something and I remember another client that had an experience and I'm able to say, oh, this client said this, or this client mm-hmm. did this, or this client had this past experience and share that with them, they're like, oh, and now they're connected. See? And it's like, I never really get to do that on this level, which is why I'm so excited, you know, you're because so it's usually one-on-one, Yeah. which the one-on-one, it fills my soul, but this, I hope can just spread even further. Um, so should we tell some stories? Yeah, I love okay. stories. Okay, I'm all about feels. If you know me, you know that. <laughs> I'm all about those like words, like how do you feel about this? What does this make you feel? Mm-hmm. So I'm just gonna throw out a word and then let's just tell a story. Ooh, fun! Okay, let's go. Let's <laughs> if go. If you don't go. have one, you could be like, pass. Okay, I, I doubt that. We'll see. Okay, I, I think let's I got it. let's start li- lighthearted, and I'm just okay. gonna say hilarious. Okay, I want to know a hilarious story. Oh, do you have God. one, or do you okay. want me to start? You start. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I've been thinking about this one because it just happened like two weeks ago. Okay. <laughs> and so we go to the park, right? We take the dog to the park, me and my kids. I have two kids. Um, oh, they just had birthdays. Oh, 15 and 12. And she looks like this. Like, <laughs> come on. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, like, I met my husband at 14. Like, that's really? weird. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. Weird. Anyway, so we go to the park, take the dog. I'm playing with the dog. The kids are over on, like, the park. You know, my big kids playing on the park. And Jack is swinging, and he hasn't been to school in a while, so it's been a while since he's been, and he wants to show us exactly how they swing at school. He's like, so we do this, and this is called Tarzan, and he like flies <laughs> off, and he's swinging, and I'm like, oh, no emergency room tonight. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So then he was like, Avery, what should I do? Should I do freestyle or Spider-Man? And I was like, where's my phone? Like, I should have my phone, right? Like, at this point. And it was in the car, so I'm just watching this, and she's like, do Spider-Man. So he is swinging high. Like, hi. And these are not his school swings, right? (laughs) And he goes to jump off, does his Spider-Man stance. But instead of being like this, he was literally like this. His butt got stuck to the seat. And he was like, like, belly flop on the ground. And I'm like, where was my phone? It was only funny once he stood up and was like, Like, he's okay? (laughs) But he had wood chips covering his body. Because you know, once you put some pressure on those wood chips. That's it. That's it. I was like, you're I was like, bless your soul, honey. Like, what? <laughs> At least you didn't end up in the emergency room. Yeah, exactly. That's hilarious. I was like, you are not breaking a knee today. Thank you for entertaining me. Oh, <laughs> so we're always solid. like, Jack, Spider-Man. And he's just like... <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> don't shame him. Yeah, I don't. Don't spider don't. shame him. That's not nice. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, I don't... I have one. Okay. Because I think it's funny. <laughs> Um, I don't know if everybody else thinks it's funny. It's I think fine. it's hilarious. It's usually had to be there, yeah. right? Yeah, you really did have to be there because, so Armidas, the, you know, like the karaoke place that they shut down, unfortunately, but they shut I've it down. Never been there. So much Aww. fun. Not the greatest food, but like <laughs> totally like usually fun environment. Yeah, you right? can't have both guys. Um, so we are like, I love karaoke. It's so much fun. Like me and my girlfriend, Caroline, we have what's called like Caroline's karaoke tips where we kind of go through and be like, you know what? Rule number one, know your crowd. And we like criticize other people. I know oh, it's so not okay. So we criticize other people <laughs> on their karaoke etiquette all the time. So we get up for karaoke and there is this song, um, um, gosh, um, Shania Twain, Man, I Feel Like a Woman. Yep, absolutely. You never realize how many lyrics are in that thing until you're up there trying to get them out and you can't breathe. And so we literally walked off stage halfway through. So oh, you just gave yeah. up. Yeah, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Can you imagine the breathe. girls in the back telling you the rules? Exactly. And I was like, look, we gotta add something to that. Karaoke rule number like 172. 
show up and finish the job because I did not. And don't pick a Shania Twain. It was bad. Do not. That, and then I've also learned my lesson with Beyonce, get me bodied. And that was a really poor life choice too because you cannot breathe. Like you're trying to have high energy. Breathe or sing. Yeah. Only no. one. Mm-mm. Pick That's one. so great. We're not Beyonce. Oh, so great. Okay. Um, How about the word coincidence? Ooh. But hold on. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it in air quotes. Okay. Coincidence. Okay. Because there's two different ones, right? Um, Travis, my husband's cousin, lives in around Reno, Nevada. Mm-hmm. And she happened to be traveling for work. Um, my dad lives in Utah. Mm-hmm. They've never met. and But she's seen pictures of him. So he was traveling to Portland. And she sends me a picture of my dad. And she's like, is that your dad? And I was like, what? what? <laughs> so she goes over and introduces herself because they know of each other. It's Travis's cousin and my dad. They know of each other. That's a coincidence, right? Mm-hmm. But how about like coincidence? Like you look back and you're like, oh, there that played out real well. Um, actually, okay. So honestly, coincidence. I have a hard time believing in coincidence. Oh, absolutely. I feel like everything is so like God ordained and like the universe aligns everything the way it's supposed to be. So my husband, actually, the way I met my husband. Okay. So I met my husband through a mutual friend. And I did not like him at all. I thought he was arrogant. He was super forward. And I was just like, dude, like, leave me alone. Like, I don't, like, no. Like, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. Kept shutting him down. Kept shutting him down. Kept shutting him down several times. Yes, you know, Brandon, several times. (laughs) I shut him down. And then finally, like, I, okay. I don't don't care. Um, I'm like, do I leave this part out? But no, I don't care. So, like, I kept shutting him down. And finally, I was like, dude, like, fine. Like, I, I, I don't date your type. So, like, just... Leave me alone. Yeah. And so he's like, all right, fine. I can't change that. So he finally left me alone. And then probably about like maybe three or four months later, I ran into him at um, Old Chicago okay. um, where I was waitressing at the time. And I was like, God, you look so familiar and blah, 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 blah. And we're talking and we're chit-chatting and stuff. And he's like, yeah. He's like, and then so we decided to go on a date. We went to go see Spider-Man, oddly enough. <laughs> Coincident- coincidentally. There we go. We went to go see Spider-Man. Um but we had been dating like for maybe three months after that and my girlfriend Dina was like it's so crazy that you and Brandon worked out who that's who that first night we hung out with and I was just like what do you mean crazy that we worked out and she was like from that night at Tamal's and I was like whoa 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 so that's where I know him from but I was already too deep so (laughs) he knew who I was the entire time Oh, that is yeah. hilarious. So, coincidentally, we are now married. <laughs> so, Timing is everything. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> You're like, I just need to meet you on a different time. Yeah. On a different day. A different day. You need to have a different <laughs> attitude. But now, that is, I love my life. That is hilarious. Yeah. I love that. So, I think, does that count as coincidence? <clears throat> yes, yeah. absolutely. Coincidentally, I dated the yeah. person I said I would. I had no interest in dating. Yeah. And well, then I and married it, him. And it really, I put it in air quotes because I do think that word is so funny. See, yeah, like, it's, it's an hilarious. interesting word. Yeah. 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 Um, and, you know, the little ones, like, you maybe you'd never know why it happened or mm-hmm. whatever. But the big ones, um, I was thinking about when I got my first studio here in Denver. Mm-hmm. We moved here eight years ago, started the business. And it was like a scary thing, but I was like, I need to rent out a space. And so I was renting out this studio on Broadway, mm-hmm. like four times a month. And I'm like, dude, I'm paying her rent. At this point, like there is no yeah. way that I'm not paying her rent, like how much money I'm giving her. And so I was like, okay, it's time. Taking a big leap of faith. We yeah. need to look for a studio space. So I asked Heather B. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, do you know of any place? Like keep your eye out. And she said, what do you want? And I was like, I want exposed brick. Mm-hmm. You know, we're starting there. <laughs> Hello. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I want it to be centrally located. Mm-hmm. I want it to be small so I can afford it. Mm-hmm. And I have to have a bathroom. Like, mm-hmm. those are, like, my rules. Yeah. And I go, basically, I want that studio that we've been renting. And she's like, yeah, you're right. Um, so she goes and talks to the photographer I'm renting from. That photographer was trying to get out of her lease. Literally within two weeks, I took her lease Stop over. Stop it! So it's one of those things that's, like, that, that chance of, like, I want to do this. This is really what I want. Okay. Here it is. Like, <laughs> What? Just saying. Oh my gosh. So that was the first studio space. And this one felt a lot like that too. This is so perfect. Crazy. Okay. Let's do another one. Okay. Promised. <sighs> Promise is so good for me. It is really um, good. Promise. I don't know that I have a story for Promise. Okay. I think, um, when I think of Promise, honestly, I think of God's faithfulness to me. Mm-hmm. And um, 
this is so we're gonna go back to coincidence for a second yeah right but when i pulled up i was listening to promises by maverick city okay um that's so good um and i was just like honestly like i was just i had my own little worship session in the car of just like he is so faithful to me and he has kept his promises to me yeah every single time like even when i think about like my fertility journey i was just like like lord like you know this is the desire of my heart to have another child and my kids obviously are like what seven years apart so you know if you know you know yeah that's, that's um, a long time it's to a wait. long time and so we we tried i mean <laughs> miscarriages like fertility treatments all those things and i remember just like honestly like i don't want to say giving up but i was just like lord like i i can't do this yeah like i don't understand like i don't understand like why this is this way right. um but i do know that you i do know what you promised to me yeah and the next month i got pregnant with layton oh my gosh and yeah so i just know every single time that he is just so faithful to me and he has kept me and so when i think of the word promise there's nothing else that i think of outside of just his faithfulness to yes me. that's it i love that so, i sorry. love that <sighs> that word makes me want to cry right now. Sorry. <laughs> I will tell you the biggest promise that I ever made, um, we ever made, me and my husband. When we moved here eight years ago, <clears throat> we were like, we'll rent a house until we're ready to buy, which mm -hmm. if you know how the market was oh, eight yeah. years ago, we're like, oh, that's going to be easy, right? <laughs> um, so we rented a house and um, the only the only thing was we couldn't have a cat. And my daughter had a cat that she was super attached to. So here we are uprooting our life. Moving here, this is already a hard thing. Um, and not only that, but Travis at the time didn't have work here. So we moved here and he left to go work somewhere else for oh, wow. four months, something like that. It was crazy. Why did we do that? But, but it worked. Whatever. Now, <laughs> it so worked. It worked. But that was really hard. So we decided, we're like, we're going to buy a house within a year anyways. So grandma, I love you, grandma. Can you keep the cat for a year? Aww. We'll come and visit. You know, when we go back to Vegas, we would go and see him. Um, and we promised Avery, within a year, you will have your cat. Um, so we get in this house, the market, we're not going to be able to buy. Like, there's no way. So we're, gonna, <laughs> we're literally going to have to rent a different house that we'll let a cat in, right? Mm -hmm. And we have two dogs. Like, this is going to mm -hmm. be impossible. So we, we never even really approached her with it because we were like, this is a promise that we made. Like, this, mm -hmm. I mean, how, how, what are those little promises that, yeah, like you break them because... We really couldn't do anything, but it's like, we can do something mm -hmm. here. It's just going to be really, really hard. Yeah. Um, so we had started to look at rentals and I was like, I'm going to make one phone call to the landlord. One. Mm -hmm. And just beg. <laughs> That's what I've got. That's what I've got. <laughs> Let's got. do it. And sure enough, he said yes. Aww. So I was like, thank you. And so they brought her her cat and I still have the video and like, I love it. But I remember, and I think I actually blogged this not too long ago because I remember thinking like the, the amount of effort we will put into keeping a promise to someone we love mm -hmm. um does that match the amount of effort that we put into keeping a promise to ourselves no it does not no which is it's, i mean maybe it's for somebody lesson. else but for me yeah. it does not no absolutely not yeah so it was such a lesson to me to go what have you been promising yourself that you just like it's just a passive whew. yeah you know and i'm sure some people have mothers that did mm -hmm. that you know what I mean? But I don't want to be that mother. Yeah, same. But yet I'll be that to myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, no, uh, I'm going to work out why today. Why are we like that? And you're like, no, it's okay. I'm just tired. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. No, you told yourself. Yeah. Your word, like, how can you keep your word to, even if you don't say, I promise. Right. Maybe we should. But though. keeping your word. Yeah, seriously. But keeping your word to yourself the same way you would keep your word to somebody that you yes. love. If you say you're going to show up somewhere, you show up. Yeah. But we often don't show up for ourselves. Yes. Ugh. Okay. Ugh. All right. All right. Ready for this one? Yes. Let it matter. That's let, three words. Yeah, it's three words, but it is just let it matter. So let, I think I can actually break it down into three. Okay, tell me, yeah. Tell so me. the story I have, I think, for let it matter is actually the story of, I think, how Gladiate Beautifully, for me, came to be. Um, so I had went through a really, really hard time, like, emotionally, like, with my mental health, and I had... Um, some really severe depression and anxiety and I had a really bad depressive episode and I remember 
like literally like laying on the cement like ground being like god like i just i can't do this anymore like i don't want to do this anymore and i was just done um and i went through that journey of just like really contemplating ending my life and i eventually the lord kept me see he kept um he kept me and i um I heard this song by, I didn't know this was going to be, ended up being so like about like my face. So I don't know how this happened, but I heard this song by, um, Lauren Daigle and like, who is it? Like one hope belonging, the belonging code. That's what it's by. Belonging code, Lauren Daigle. And it was, it said the waves are only waves. Um, and is it on this side? Yes. So, and then I got, I'm like, where is it at? It's just so crazy how it all happened. Yeah. Cause I got this tattoo right before I found out I was pregnant with Layton. Oh. Um, but it's the waves are only waves. And so I was like, all right. And I felt a big tug on my heart that God was just like, oh, you need to share your testimony. I told you to share your testimony. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, okay, cool, <laughs> fine. So I told some friends and I kept hearing God saying like, that's not good enough. Like they know who I am. And again, I'm not trying to make this about faith entirely, but it just coincidentally, yeah, yeah. it's happening that way. So it was, it was this like, that's not good enough. Like Alex, like, Yes, you were obedient to that, but they know who I am. The people that you shared it with, they know who I am. So that is when I birthed Gladiate Beautifully from this place of like pain and this idea of like leading while you're bleeding. And I was like in a church leadership role at the time. And I, it just, it was just a big kind of mindset shift. And that's when I had to really realize that I had to let what I was experiencing and what I had experienced acknowledge that it is there and it is a part of my story now and it's a part of me um and then really being able to sit and letting it matter so by sharing that story because somebody needed to hear it yeah and so after sharing that story with the world <laughs> um it just really sat and it sat it sits with me I'm just like you have to let whatever your experiences are, you have to let them matter. And yeah. it goes back to what I said in the beginning is that we don't exist. I just truly don't believe that we don't exist just for ourselves. We yeah. exist to change somebody else's life. And so my experience wasn't just for me. It was with the intention to show another woman, another person that they can get through it and you have to let that stuff matter. Yeah. And it's important that you share those stories and then it opened up such a different world of like connection for me with yeah. so many different people. I mean, I was getting like DMs and like, it was just super overwhelming, but it definitely affirmed and it, it affirmed in me how important it is to let your experiences, let your story, let it matter, whatever that it is, you have to let it matter. Yeah. So yeah. Well, I love that. And I feel like as you started your story, like I feel like you're, I, I'm right there on that path with you. Um, I, I would say, uh, timeline doesn't really matter, but I would say I'm just learning about depression and mm -hmm. like understanding what's happening mentally and like mm -hmm. where that health is. And I caught myself, I would say like I've been working on this for about a year. And the thing that I will say to myself, like in the heat of something, I'm upset about something, something didn't go my way over and over. I catch myself saying it doesn't matter. Literally those words, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so like, ah, this no. statement it's just like it's one of those things that um as a two wing one let's talk enneagram for a second right i'm a two <laughs> um it's like as long as everyone else is, is happy what i'm feeling doesn't matter um and stop like you have to stop and i will catch myself now and go yes it does and i'll say it out loud yes it does you have to check yourself it does matter so mm -hmm. how you feel is valid what you're going through is valid. It yeah. does matter. And then taking another step. And I think, again, this is a huge thing for me. Um, I, I have a really good connection with women. Like, they come in. We connect. I really feel like we impact each other's lives. I love you. Um, but I, that next step of sharing with other people is a really hard thing for me. So you have been such an inspiration oh for me. So I'm like, look at Alex go. Look, look at her Look at her run. Like, I can do this. I can Aww. do this. Um, <clears throat> And just a side note, it's so funny because since I was young, okay, so I was actually a pastor's kid, PK over here, um, it's pretty close. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and since I've been young, my dad has always called uh, me his little preacher, always. And he's always just like, just wait, just wait. And I'm You'll like, see? I'm like, oh gosh. <laughs> so it's funny 
funny just hearing all of this happen. Mm-hmm. Like, all these coincidences. Yeah. Coincidences. Look at us. Coincidences. <laughs> See? Oh, oh, oh. oh, I love that. Oh, stories are so good. Okay. Will you, would you mind, to mm-hmm. tell me a story about your Blush and Tease experience? Oh it doesn't God, have yes. to be the whole, you can Girl, tell the whole. I got this. You're like, shut up. No, I got this. Okay, guys. <laughs> okay, so, my Blush and Tease experience is actually really, really wild. To me, it's wild. And it matters. Um, but I had been watching Adina for the longest time, like from afar. I know her makeup artist, Heather. Yep. And I've known Heather for a really long time. I actually planned Heather's wedding, like, God, 10 years ago. Yeah. That's like 12 years ago now. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's 11. Yeah. It's a long time ago. Um, so like I had followed Heather and I'd seen Heather's pictures, some of the things that I had seen like Heather do and not like the, her full shebang or anything, but just little, I'm like, who is this? So I stalked Adina politely um from the sidelines on socials and everything (laughs) and then I finally I was like you know what I've admired her for so long so I had her on the podcast and I was so like I like why haven't I done this like why have I done this and I have a lot of my own like body image issues but she made me feel so empowered you made me feel so empowered to do it after that call or a podcast and I booked it like I think I think I emailed her right after and was like yeah. let's book it yeah no I <laughs> so, think you like yeah. hit end with like on the record and, and bam and you said so yeah what, what are we doing how, what are we doing how do I book this yeah so I booked it and then I had one session scheduled that I um canceled because of my own body image issues mm-hmm. and then when I rescheduled it finally I like I rescheduled and I was like, great, I've lost 40 pounds, blah, 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 blah. I'm super excited to do it. Let's do it. And I said, do not let me cancel this. And I ended up gaining a good chunk of that weight back, a little bit more than that weight (laughs) back. And I did it anyway. And so I walked in the door and it's just like, you're, you are welcomed with so much like love and positivity and just light. And then like, um, Haley's in there like doing your hair and she respects the fact that you don't like hairspray. I hate hairspray. Um, <laughs> she respects that. And then of course Heather is in there making you feel so beautiful. And then Adina brings you a lovely drink and everything is just so like, I felt such at rest, but then I got anxious again mm-hmm. as soon as she was like, all right, go get changed. And I was like, oh, I don't do this. Uh, that part was fun. Uh, yeah, Let's that part was there. fun. Let's stop here. And I'll tell you, it's so crazy because I ordered my album and you see this progression that the way the story of that day was really told and the way that Adina put the album together. And it is this beginning where you can see it's a little more reserved. You can tell that there is some like, I'm a little more timid in the beginning. And then as you scroll through all the way to I guess you don't scroll I guess you turn the page my flip. bad flip. flip as you flip there you go as you flip <laughs> through I'm like I looked I look at it and you can see this transformation of like who I was in in these pictures like it was a story of like okay like great she feels like she's beautiful but like you can tell that there's something there yeah and then by the end you know there's no clothes on. So um, <laughs> Oops. it was incredible to experience. And actually I haven't, I've got all this content geared up to share, but I hadn't shared with the world yet. Um, but Adina knows um, that actually after seeing all of my photos and everything, I had a doctor's appointment for some other like female stuff. Like, it's always happening. And um, I had decided even lo- after looking at myself and loving myself that I had to like, look at those photos, like, like, you look great, Alex. Like, yes, like, this isn't, like, as tight as you want it to be. Or this isn't, like, as small as you want it to be. But it really made me take a step back and realize that, like, like that's me. And, like, I'm beautiful. And I am strong. And I am fearless. Like, I can do this. And that really empowered me to make a really big step. And I actually got vertical, or BSG, which is vertical, a vertical sleeve gastrectomy. Um, so weight loss surgery, essentially. And it has been such an incredible journey. And I, and I say journey because I know it's not over. Yeah. And I can't wait to book my next session. It's one of my, once I hit the certain number that I want to hit, um, it is my next gift to myself to do another session. Oh, so um, the blush and tease experience for me was so much more than just like these pretty pictures. It 
it did a lot of like internal work for me that I needed to do at the time I needed to do. Cause I almost wonder if that first session that I hadn't canceled, if I would have been emotionally and mentally ready to do that hard work. Yeah. And so I love you and I'll always appreciate you for that. Something so simple. I know like photography, like, but that that changed your life. Like, yeah, it, no, it did. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's what I try to tell people is it is so much bigger than the pictures. The yeah. pictures, honestly, are almost this like side note at the yeah, end of exa- everything. That's, and that's they're beautiful, ridiculous but like it's a photography business, but yeah. it really is so much more than that. And it's funny as I've talked to you as you're making decisions and doing things. There's part of it from the outside that's like, oh, she did a shoot and saw herself and then made this decision. Mm-hmm. Almost feels negative. Mm-mm. But I can hear it in your voice when we've talked on the phone. There's something about you that's like you. Oh, yeah. There's power there. You know what I mean? That you like made a promise to yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you went through with it, even though it's scary and terrifying. But you did it in the right way, mm-hmm. where you fell in love with yourself. Yeah. It really wasn't like I hate myself. I'm gonna get the surgery. It was just like no, like you want. Like I had to really kind of understand. Like one like obesity isn't as simple as people make it to be and it is this very much it's a disease the same way alcoholism is a disease and um it the shoot just made me it really made me love myself and made me want to take care of better care of myself and do whatever i needed to do to make sure that i could always show up as that picture on the wall i could always show up as a confident beautiful healthy um, strong, fearless woman that I know that I am. Yeah. But those pictures remind me that's who I am. Yes. Even it it, it really isn't even about like the body, like, like I'm staring at this picture on the wall in here and it's not about like how big or small I am. I just look at myself and I'm like, you got it girl. Yeah. So yeah, it's totally not a negative thing. And what, uh, um, what a blessing it is to get to have that woman in my yeah. life. Seriously. Like, and everybody who knows her knows yeah. this. I love it. <laughs> so, um, okay, we can talk about this forever. I, I So, yes, I was on her podcast. Mm-hmm. I will make sure that we put a link there because that was so much fun. So and much she fun. does talk about body image issues and mm-hmm. how do you make people feel comfortable. She mm-hmm. asks all the questions on that podcast that I'm sure you probably are thinking. Exactly. No, seriously. You did. Like, if you you're did thinking good. about it, there you go, guys. Listen you did to that so episode. good. Um, but tell us about your conference because I'm so freaking oh, loved for it. I am so I just got my ticket yesterday. Excited. Oh, I'm so excited, you guys. This conference is. It is my heart. It is literally about letting it matter. Like, honestly, like I came to that point of like, this is what it's about. So it is really for, this is taking your everyday woman, your average woman that may be going, may, may or may not be overwhelmed, but are constantly saying yes to everybody else. And this conference is for the woman who wants to show up for herself. Yeah. who wants to create her own seats, her hell, the, her own table if she has to. But it really is for any woman that wants to, anyone that didn't identify as a woman that wants to show up for herself and that wants to really just invest in not only herself as a woman, but invest as herself as a career in her career, invest in um, herself as an entrepreneur. This is, it's such a, guys, it's just, just get your ticket. Yep. It, it's just, October 10th. Just come hang out with us. Yeah, come hang out with us. It's October 10th. There's tons oh, of champagne. So there's food. There's lunch. Um, it is just going to be a phenomenal time. Like, if you're a mama, get a sitter. Leave him with the husband. Like, Seriously. It's football season then. Like, he'll be at home on the couch anyway. Yes. So, Seriously, come. Come, it's come, come, so come, 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 come. It's going to be so freaking yeah. cool. I remember when you were looking for outfits for your yeah. session, you found, like, this top, and I was like, will you wear that at the conference? Like, yes, it's still on my board. <laughs> Thank you good? very much. Like, oh, my God, that is saucy, <laughs> and I love it. Oh, my gosh. We're going to have so much fun. Okay, let's finish up with an easy question. Yeah. Favorite song right now? Oh my gosh. Uh, me and Alex share the same love for Johnny, Johnny Swim. Swim. That's... Which, okay, I have to say, I love them to death. Mm-hmm. When Magnolia Network picked them up, I got a little worried. I'm <sighs> like, will you please play the small slow show still? Like, yes, we like, love thank the small you. shows. Which I'll see you there in I October. <laughs> I bought VIP tickets. I cannot oh, effing Oh my gosh. Um, but since you said Johnny Swim, actually, I listened to the song on repeat the past few days, is Say What You Will. By Johnny Swim. Can I pick two? Yes, yes. And then my second favorite song right now is um, 
First Try by Johnny Swim. Yeah. Johnny Swim. So, yeah. sorry. Okay, so on when I bought the ticket, it says, what's your hype song? Johnny Swim. It has to be. That's See? That's totally what I bet. You didn't have to fill it out. I, I know, you're like, I know where she's going. <laughs> I know where it's fine. Oh my gosh, but thank yeah. you so much for doing so this with me. Thank you for having you're me. You're like the pro, so I feel like, oh, oh stop it, no. Get her in here, and she'll, she'll help yeah. me get this started. Thank you for having oh, me. Oh, I love you. I love you. Let it matter. I love it. I should do it. Ooh. <laughs>